I know everybody, what is that? That Jack, are you gonna run that thing this whole time through the video? No, I'm not. Yes, uh, old Bat Jack JW here, uh, episode 135 with radio. Glad you're here. It is Saturday morning. You are tuned in. You got your coffee, or maybe maybe some of you are not tuned in in the morning. Could be in the afternoon. Could be not even Saturday. Who knows? But either way, you're here. I'm glad you clicked on the video and. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good night, uh, whatever it may be. Yeah, I'm sure you're looking at this giant thing right in front of the uh, the whole video here. And uh, some of you new subscribers are wondering what in the world am I clicking on now? What is this? Um, this is our radio show that we do. Uh, those of you that have been with the channel for a long time, help out some of these new people. They uh, may not necessarily understand what we're doing here on Saturday morning. This is where we talk about stuff, upcoming things, what we've been doing, and all that sorts of stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, last time we talked, uh, you know, of course, these last couple of radio episodes, we have just sad news, which has been a bummer. So October has definitely been pretty grim uh, in that aspect. But... Um, Let's uh, let's kick it off with some bright news and everything. And uh, of course, as always, uh, we will always remember Ed at USAF and C Max um, there. All right, so I got 454. Packer he says coffee time has arrived. Yes, it is. Coffee time is here. It's that time. All right, Mr. Holster. He says, I really. I would really like to find a Beretta Centurion, or cent I hope I'm saying that right. I don't, he, D, in excellent condition. Wish he had saved one uh, of the five that he that he had. I guess he had to sell them. Right? They discontinued them, and it spiked the prices. And isn't that the truth of stuff? They discontinue things, and then all of a sudden it's gone, and now everybody wants one back when they didn't want one or when it was a cheap piece of junk and blah 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 so speaking of that keep that in mind there, there's there's something i got right here hiding behind this machine that's a uh you would say back in the day would have been a cheap piece of junk but now they're kind of collectible and in fact there's kind of a cult following for it i know i'm leaving you on ain't i it's like a trailer for a good movie coming up we have denzel washington returns this summer for what he is doing next get on board Okay, enough of that. All right, Mr. Holster. Yes, sir, is, a, is uh, that is good polish. I was talking about the uh, Angles uh, polish the last time we did that. Uh, he said, I didn't know that, uh, that Mr. Holster was left-handed. All right, but he was forced to do everything in sports and shooting right-handed. But then when he grew up, he wrote left. Hey, but we're right here. <laughs> okay, in case you don't know what I'm talking about here, Actually, it was, uh, I let on in the last uh, radio show that we did. I said to everybody, I said, name in the comments. What is the, uh, the something that you would like to find, collect, add to your collection uh, if money wasn't the option or, ob uh, you know, money was no object, basically. Yeah, what is it? List it. Let me know what it would be. I told you guys already, the only thing that really uh, uh, gets me going now, uh, my, my piques my interest perks my ears and I go what what'd you say what you got because um you know doing this business and being in, involved in the gun counters and stuff like that you see a lot you handle a lot you get you know I was really immersed in a lot of this stuff at one point in time uh but now it's a lot of it has slowed down dramatically for me it's just like I have learned to just go eh, I can go without it but there is one and it's a browning high power yes I used to have an feg manufactured one Got rid of it before I moved. I shouldn't have. Oh, well, things happen. But I would like to get an actual, legit, browning, Belgian-made one. That, that would be my ultimate there. So, anyway, let's. I wanted to see what everybody else had to say about that. Uh, Jerry Johnson said, uh, yep, those browning high powers are awesome, Batjack. Um, he has his dad's high power. Nice. Practical, impractical 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh Let's see here. What would he say? I do shoot it sometimes, but not as much. That's why I bought a Glock 22 Gen 4 a couple of years ago. I would have, 
I would love to have a Belgium Browning High Power in 9mm, but yes, they do. They cost quite a bit, uh, a thousand bucks or more. But you know what? Sometimes you can get them for less. Uh, depends where you're going. But uh, he says uh, for, an, uh, for a used one, bucket list item. I, I guess that would be his bucket list item. It's a brown, so he's agreeing with me. So, Jerry, you want a Brownie High Power too? Make sure you save one for me, though. Okay. Scott F. says, I sure missed the Friday fix by Roy. That's right. 504 Dirt Dart. Like, that's interesting. That uh, And I know, Scott, you go back with the channel for, the, for a while. But, yes, 504 Dirt Dart and the Friday fix. I would always tune into that uh, with a cup of coffee. Um, and he says the 629 is a nice one. Yes, we brought out the 629 again and also the recent video on the channel that you guys have been watching. The 629 returns, obviously, on the Patreon. You guys have already seen that quite some time ago. All right, Evie Saint, morning, Fat Jack JW. Morning, Evie Saint. All right, the gun that I hunted for years was uh, the picture and his thing is Smith Must Model 27 with three and a half inch barrel. Interesting. I see that. I always did wonder what that was. I almost thought it was a rubber. No, I didn't say that. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. James L. My wife is left handed as one of my five kids. Thing is, my wife is one of 13 and out of 13. Five or six are left-handed. Oh, isn't that interesting? And my friend Darren Bag, six gun. This is a great show, Bat Jack. Uh, I've been with you since the beginning. Yes, I know. That's one of the very first things I ever got. All right, one of your first fifty subscribers. I know it was crazy. I remember when I was just like barely had a hundred people subscribed to this, uh, doing this. Uh, and we even were talking on Google Plus when that was a thing. <laughs> we share a lot of the same ideas. I do collect guns, but also love to shoot them. And a lot, I'll shoot them a lot. Lucky enough to have the land that I do to do that. Oh, man, yeah. If you have the land to shoot, that's that's where it's at right there. That changes a lot. Uh, the Snubby 44 that you have is great. Uh, let's see. The best gun I'd be looking for in my collection would be an old lever action Winchester or Henry. I guess you love your lever action rifles. Yes, I currently do not have one right now. Maybe someday I'll pick one up again. Depends where I'm at. All right, Lion Quest Fitness says, Oh my lord, did Mr. Holster, <laughs> did a Mr. Holster laugh just come out of your mouth? <laughs> All right, uh, as for the elusive gun for his collection, uh, I'd really like to have. What is it? I gotta go oddball, he says. A nickel plated Taurus 82. Ooh. I like your style. I like your style. All right, Big Al. Matt Jack, we need more old souls like you, especially the lefties. And he is a lefty too. That's pretty awesome. You've been swamped at work. Apologize. That sucks. I know what that's like being swamped at work and not having time for everything. Um,. And I watch you because of the common sense, lack of obsession with uh, tactical things and impractical for day. Yeah, I mean, that's just me. I don't know. I don't, uh, I, I just, uh, I don't have, I, it's just not, I don't get obsessed with things. You know, I, I think it's important not to, you know, I, I remember a really good friend of mine, close friend of mine, like I said, you know, he said, it's very important not to get obsessed with this. You know, so I was breaking into this gun industry and knowing all that. And he's so right. You can't, you got to be able to just walk away from it. It's just a hobby. It's just something I do. Um, you can just walk away and just, you know, do it. It's very important because you can jeopardize a lot of things in your life. I, I'm not one that gears up every day. You know, I'm not like, oh, got to, like, you know, it always reminds me of like the scene from Commando with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he's right before he goes to take over the compound. It's like, tch, 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 tch. I mean, he's just like gearing up for like World War III. And that's what I feel like. It's like some of these people, it's like, man, you got to like, it's like, okay, let's see, I'm going out today. I got to have, uh, let's see, a knife in this pocket, knife in that pocket, draw a knife here, uh, cross knife over here, zip cuffs, regular cuffs, mace, a gun, five extra magazines, an AR pistol on my back, a strapped on pistol on my ankle. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And where are you going? going to Walgreens. All right. 
Jeffrey Kelly. October 22nd uh, was the 50th anniversary of the Horrible Gun Control Act of 1968. Just remember. Okay. Cool. All right, moving on. Bernard Flood. Greetings from Ireland. Love the Snub 44. I do too. It uh, reminds me of that movie every time I see it. <laughs> All right. Edward Petty. He says... Uh, I'm, I must replace the Model 29, pin and recessed. So that's, uh, but he would love to have a Winchester 1873 octagon barrel. Can't argue with that. Two inch 1968 Python is what he would like for his collection. That's from Jeffrey Kelly. That's a good choice. That's a really good choice. Uh, I kind of, you know, honestly, uh, I kind of want a, I kind of want a, a, a Colt Diamondback snubby just because that's what Steve McQueen had in Bullet. <laughs> um, John Ratko, uh, he says, just wish I could be skillfully ambidextrous. Yeah, that would, that would be nice. Uh, the real Cobra Burnout. <laughs> uh, met some, met some uh, great folks here on YouTube. That is very true. We have met a lot of really cool poster uh, people on YouTube. So I was reading that Mr. Rory James that says he likes my Jaws 2 poster. Don't you? It's right there. Hey, you know what? Wait a minute. I just noticed something as we got down to the last of these comments. Yes. Where are you, Joe? Joe P, where are you, Joe? See you in there, Joe. Okay, <laughs> back to the topic. But yes, uh, as the real Cobra Burnout was saying, we have met a lot of really cool folks here on YouTube. A lot of the people that are part of this and understand this, what we do, and they get it. It's awesome. There are some people that don't. That's okay. Go unsubscribe and get somewhere else and go, go do something else with your life. Um, your negativity is not wanted here uh, but that is we have met a lot of really cool people and it's sad when you see that some of them have passed away and it happens and that's what happens uh i've noticed that the older i get uh you know when you're a teenager everything is just like you're invincible in your early 20s you're just like you're happy go lucky you know you just we and everything's a big joke and uh pipe dreams are not pipe dreams they're actual reality and uh you really can't understand much. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of reflecting almost in a way how I felt back in that time myself. Um, as you get older, you get more refined. Uh, yeah, I'd like to say a lot of us would uh, age like wine and get more finer and understand more things and um, kind of look at things differently like I do. I look at life a lot different. Uh, not, I'm not 23. I'm not 24. I'm not, you know, whatever. I'm not in my 20s. I'm not a teenager. Time passes and it just goes it, it gets different it does it changes it gets different that's why I have the outlook on life I do uh, because it is a lot of it is greatly different for me it's just it's not um, you know I'm not invincible anymore I'm not uh, you know I don't have that mentality that like you know Jimmy Dean kind of you know live live fast die young kind of thing no I start slowing down you know, I just start slowing down things, start thinking about reality, uh, start thinking about friends and family and how much more important they are. Uh, these things are just materialistic. You can't take them with you. As the old saying goes, you ever seen a, or as the song goes, you ever seen a hearse with a trailer hitch? No, it just doesn't happen. So I do, I look at life differently, I really do. Uh, you know, a lot of this is materialistic. You know, I said this once, I said it before, uh, you know, I would drop every single thing I got right here and throw it all away. I don't care what it is, I would throw it away in the garbage can if my parents, my mom needed my assistance and my mom needed me or my mom got sick. I mean, that's family. You know, that's just the way it goes. This is all nothing. Um, you know, that's how close a lot of that should be for a lot of people. You know, that's just the way it should be. This is nothing. This is just replaceable get more of them or get something else like it it's important to have that thinking and then you know again that goes to obsession uh, you 
cannot, it, it just should not be obs an obsession. It shouldn't be something that you eat and drink it all day, every day. It's like injecting in my heart. It's not healthy. It's not. So, all right, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> live your life the way you want it. I'm not here to tell you how to. I'm just saying that's the way I live my life. Um, you know, there's only so much that matters. In the end, you just hope that um, you've done good and that judgment will come. All right, so I know you're, you're probably sitting there going, well, okay, we've been watching this video. Now, what the heck is this? It's a rotary rock tumbler. I actually went and got one. Um, I don't shoot a ton of uh, brass or bullets anymore, whatever. Rounds of ammunition, I know. Oh, it's a lot of bullets, round of ammunition. Um, I don't shoot as much as I used to. Uh, maybe that'll change. Depends where I'm at. Uh, but I don't. So I, I knew that I didn't want to get a very big one. And this is very small. It's a three-pound uh, rotary tumbler. It's going there. Uh, you fill it up with... Uh, I got in here... I read online, actually, you know, what to put in there. And it is uh, uh, water, Dawn dish soap, and lemon juice. And you just put it all in there, turn it on, and that's pretty much just the sound. It's not too bad. In fact, if you wanted to, you could go shove it in the closet and close the door if you needed to. But that's it. It's a rubber drum. And here's the example. And I've actually, I have a video on this. I haven't posted it yet. Don't know if you can see that. That's pretty horrible looking brass, 38 special. Bought this at a yard sale. And there's 45 minutes into the tumbler. In fact, it might have even been half an hour, I don't know, uh, with the Dawn disc soap and uh, lemon juice. And they've come out pristine, pretty, pretty nice considering. I used to do a lot of the uh, the corn cob media and all that, and I since then quit. I, I said, ah, no more. I'm not going to do that no more. Uh, it's a big mess. I just, I, I'm not into it. This is a lot more to me. This, this works a lot. Works out a lot better. So I just let this stuff dry. You can even, if you wanted to, I guess you could throw it in like a toaster oven or something on really low heat and let it cool off. But nah, you can just leave it. It'll dry. It'll dry pretty good. Uh, obviously, you don't want to, this is not something you want to plan for, like, you know, soon that you're going to, if you want to reload now, then maybe, yeah, the, the, the old uh, corn cob. But so it has its place. You have to rem remember, because you're dealing with water. So that's the thing. They do have a bigger one. I didn't want a bigger one. I didn't need it. So, but yeah, that's what I got. I'll put this down so you can perhaps see get that out of your way i know looking at that half the video so i know i told you i had something down here that i was talking about then i went to the gun show to get Ooh, i went back to the gun show and i went there specifically for this now uh if you guys remember some of you've been with the channel for a while i broke out this knife uh this is really cool now to me these are collectible they're they're awesome they are old classic risotto switch blades uh they were they came around in the 50s and 60s i didn't i don't know a terrible lot of them but they're basically when you think of the movies uh, there are so many movies and more so it seemed like so late 70s 80s uh to the late 80s 88 89 this was the pretty much the hollywood switch blade that was the one and now they weren't made very very well in fact, they're made quite cheap, and a lot of them broke, and that's why they're collectible. So there's kind of a cult following for these things. There, there really is. I'm not lying about that. There's some Rizzuto uh, heavy collectors. Now, I've never really been uh, into them until I kind of read a little bit about them. I actually just like the style. My favorite style of these is the guard. Now, this is nothing tactical or anything that's going to be like, you know, send you in the forest, build a house kind of a you know, I'm going to go to war because I'm John Rambo. But there, there's a cool factor in the vintage and the sexiness of it. Now, these are things I don't play with or I don't carry them or anything like that. They're strictly a cool collectible item 
that I have that just kind of I like to admire and look look at. So this is the very first one I bought from a gentleman out there. He's a, he's a good old boy. He had three of them, and I bought this one from him. I've had it for a while and always thought, you know, because he had a couple more. I knew he had a couple more, and I didn't pull the trigger for, say, or push the button on it to go get it. But I got around stewing around a lot, kicking myself and kicking myself and said, you know, I really probably should get them. And I see this guy at quite a few shows. So the last show I went to, I said, oh, I didn't see him. That sucked. Uh, but this time around, I knew I had a feeling he was going to be at this show. So I said, I'm going to go and see if I can find him. Sure enough, I did. I found him, and I just pulled, the, pushed the button and bought him. He has got a couple other ones that he had. These were the ones. I oiled them up with good old Ballastol, took care of them, shined up the blade a little bit. But there they are. Now, these are the classic black-handled ones, the silver, black and silver Thing going on these are the classics that you see both of these are really awesome I got really fascinated with one like this because of Beverly Hills Cop 2 with uh, Billy Rosewood when they're seen where Eddie Murphy is trying to pry the drawer open at one of the uh, office buildings he snaps the blade off and he says oh, you know and then you'll see just the kind of quick thing of Billy just grab, go in his jacket pocket, whip one out, fire it up. And then he gives it, and then, you know, because it, it just gives that, like everybody kind of does that. <laughs> so I've always liked that in movies. Every time you see one of these things get clicked out, it's, it's such that dramatic, um, just that dramatic acting or anything. Cause it's like supposed to just freak everybody out. It's like when somebody clicks it out, they're like, Shh! and then, you know, just people, they do that thing where it's like, and then he switched out a switchblade and people reclined in that jet terror. It's just funny. Uh, one of the more dramatic ones is Hellraiser. Hellraiser is one of the most, I, of course, the knife in there is just, I want that knife bad, but you can't find, I don't know. I, but the girl, the guy's going around chasing the girl with the switchblade. I got another one here. And he, you know, he clicks it out at her and she just screams and freaks out. And like, you know, it's just, it's just, a, I mean, it's just, a, so it always made me laugh about that. But anyway, but that's what you got to do, right? You got to live, you got to laugh. Life is short. See you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out.